What's up your lovely people, welcome back to the channel and today I got given a request to create a video on how to re-thermal case your GPU and because I've had this RX 570 since November 2019 I thought I'll take upon myself to re-thermal paste my GPU. So in this video I'm going to be showing step by step on how to re-thermal paste your GPU plus the precautions you should take before taking apart your GPU. Like I said my name is Noam T and I do educational videos on PC and tech every two weeks on a Wednesday and I do gaming and reacts every Monday and every Friday. So if that's your sort of thing, then consider hitting that subscribe button down below, turn those notification bells on. So for the interaction, this week's submission. So I've got a setup sent from my boy Matt, who's from Scotland, and his setup is looking proper clean. It looks pretty sick. I like his whole purple theme going on right here. I'll show it up on the video right now. And if you want to know more about the PC part list, then I'll link it in the box below. If you want to send me any crazy tech or any cool setups like this one today, then make sure to hit me in the emails above and let's get straight back into the video so first things first what you want to do is get your stuff laid out first of all you need a gpu you need yourself a set of soft cotton wall pads using something a bit softer because it still gets the job done and it prevent scratches on surfaces. Next thing is I would advise getting yourself a tray. I know it's full of junk and crap. Um, that's because I've been fiddling around with stuff on my computer as you usually do. And I thought I kept a tray with me and have it full. I would highly advise getting a magnetic one just to hold the screws down, but this will do the job to a T. Next thing's next, get yourself a cup of iron brew or a glass of iron brew, because that would definitely get you through this process. I do not condone having liquids near your GPU or near your computer. Do not do that. Do not be an idiot. <laughs> also get yourself a bottle of acetone i would highly recommend using isopropyl alcohol 99.9% .9 or 97 because that will get the job done better than acetone acetone is still good it's just isopropyl alcohol just gets the job more cleaner yeah more cleaner why not next thing's next i would highly recommend getting yourself a screwdriver kit that provides torque head screws fill up head screws flat head screws etc etc that's four mobiles and four computers i actually got this oreo one from amazon that costs around a tenner so it is really worth it if you want to take apart your pc and take apart your gpus and why not? And the final products you would need is some sort of thermal paste. I've got two separate brands here. I've got Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut and I've got Cooler Master Master Gel. I would highly recommend investing in Thermal Grizzly as it provides 12.5 watts per meter Kelvin compared to the Master Gel that provides 8 watts per meter Kelvin. So that's meaning the grade quality and materials that they use in the thermal paste the higher it is the higher grade quality the lower it is the lower grade quality hence the lower price so then enough of the layout let's actually get into the tutorial so first things first you're going to flip over your gpu that looks like this flip it over onto its front and what you see here with the rx 570 you actually got six screws one here one here one here one here one here one here with other graphic card it might actually have more screws so make sure to look into your gpu a little bit better as there might be more screws with this we are going to be focusing on screwing the screws you don't want to touch any of the other bits um some gpus actually most gpus provide a warranty sticker and a lot of brands do this so you, they don't want you faffing around and taking apart your GPU because they want you to send it to them and if you do break the warranty you also potentially can break the RMA or the RA so keep that in mind that's why you're watching this video so you can get a good idea on how to take apart your GPU and re thermal paste it so then let's actually start unscrewing when I do unscrew my GPU I'm actually just going to do it in a crisscross pattern so I'm actually just going to start out to the bottom left I would keep them to the side of the GPU but I just want to show me using the tray. There's going to be a lot of like shadows in the way and I apologize for that. There's actually, it's quite hard to get some lighting on it. I would highly advise getting a tray anyway, but cause my surface is quite flat, the screws ain't going to go anywhere. So I should be okay. Um, also, obviously we're going to take the uh, two screws on the far right off just so that we can take the back plate off without it snapping. Also a tip or an FYI, you want to get yourself a cover that covers your PCIe uh, connector. You don't want to damage that. So having a cover, like I got, I got given a cover as soon as I got the graphics card. So that's pretty handy. So keeping that on there actually helps prevent in shock and stuff like that. So then let's actually break this warranty sticker. Let's see what's behind the GPU. You could have just heated up the sticker and just peeled it off to avoid the warranty or avoid breaking the warranty. But to be fair, I know what I'm doing, so I'm just going to take it apart and just pierce it anyway. What I forgot to mention is that there's two screws by the magnetic plate. 
that holds all your HDMI's, uh, ports, and all the other ports. So what we want to do is actually flip it on the other side, and what you see here is there's two screws. I don't know if the camera could pick up, but there's two screws right around here that I'm going to be taking off and take this metal bracket off. So FYI. <laughs> So now we've got a layout of our screws. So we've got two of the metal bracket. It actually helps because they're actually colored like aluminium, kind of similar to the bracket here. We've got two screws that are for behind the sink, uh, heat sink and we've got the four main ones that are attached to the main base plate. So now we want to gently flip it over without fiddling around with anything. And we kind of want to wiggle this around until we can kind of get it off. Oh, there you go. So with a little bit of wiggle room, you just got yourself the back plate separated from the actual heatsink. So I'm going to try and do this without damaging the fan. So if I just reveal everything, so we've got ourselves the chip here that needs to be re thermal paste is actually looking a bit dry. So this is probably the best time to do it. A lot of GPUs with fans do have fan connectors. So be aware you do have to detach this. So in this case, I'm actually just going to take the white cable out. Don't try and force it out, but do give it a little bit of a wiggle. Don't be afraid to give it a bit of force. I know I just freaking, it looked like I might have just ripped that out and I'm sorry for anyone that's being triggered right now, but do be careful when taking fan connectors out because they could actually affect your fans and not cool down your GPU properly. So with the board rotated, we want to get yourself a nice clean cotton pad and the isopropyl alcohol, but in my case, acetone, and then apply a little quick slosh to the pad. And there you go, it's nice and wet. And then what you want to do is quickly screw the cap back on to your acetone. Screw the cap back on because it does evaporate at room temperature, so bear that in mind. Um, what you want to do is just simply just start wiping away. I would I just do it in uh, general circular motions. With the thermal compound or thermal paste, if you get it around the chip or on the outside, it actually doesn't affect it. So bear that in mind, you are safe in that case. So keep that in mind. So what we're actually going to do is just clean it. So there you go, you got one nice clean chip, re-thermal paste our GPU. So there's actually a lot of different ways you can apply thermal paste onto your GPU. Um, people like to do the dot method, a lot of people like to do the um, crisscross pattern method, which I think is a bit stupid, I, I would not recommend that. And some others like to do a line method. You can do it however you want. Uh, you can do it the dot method because when you do compress it, it just spreads out naturally. You can also do the same thing with the line method. Personally, I wouldn't recommend doing a crisscross pattern because it can just overflow and then cover all this and you just don't want that. And also another thing is you don't want to apply too much thermal paste because that can actually insulate the heat and reverse the effect and heat up your GPU by quite a bit. And that is how you do it. You don't need any bigger than that. My chip is quite small. I know you probably need like a bigger P size when it comes to RTX 2080 Ti's, RTX 2070's, 5700 XT's, even 5600 XT's and so on. But because this is an RX 570, it's quite a small card anyway. So I'm just gonna leave it as that. Now we got ourselves some thermal paste onto the chipset. We wanna reconnect our fan and gently Put everything back together bit by bit so first of all i want to connect the fan because i don't want to like mess anything up there you go fan connected you don't want to like not connect your fan and reconnect everything because then your gpu could just heat up and not cool down and like i said it could just reverse the effect and be really bad for your gpu literally you want to just line the screw heads to the holes as I put this together, I'm gonna to give it a slight compress so the thermal paste can spread apart and spread all over the chip. And what you wanna do is, hopefully if you've done it correctly, is you would line up the threading into the hole where you can put the screw into. So you've got one here, one here, one here, one here. That's sorted. You've got two up here. Yep, they're aligned. You've got two up here as well. And there's a total of eight screws. Personally, I wouldn't screw them in too hard because they could actually rip the thread and potentially make your back plate pop out. So I would actually just hand tighten them. Don't go overboard, don't go crazy. So what you wanna do when you when it comes to screwing in the screws, you wanna do them in a crisscross pattern. Why? Cause it actually spreads the thermal paste out evenly. And now you got yourself all the screws back in, in place. 
and your graphics card is back to normal. Um, now you've got all of the screws back into place, I'm going to be running a temperature test. So with this GPU I did overclock it and I was running around 76 degrees Celsius at the time. But with the new thermal paste put into place, hopefully we're going to be dropping temperatures down to just below 70 or even around 68 while this baby is overclocked. So I'll get those test results done now and I'll show you a lot in the next slide through. And with the results from before and after, we see quite a beneficial temperature difference. And I'm hoping that with this tutorial, it's going to help a lot of you lot out too. And it should show you how easy it is to re-thermal paste your GPU. If you do enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you do enjoy the content I create, where I do PC and tech videos every two weeks on a Wednesday, gaming and react videos every Monday and every Friday, then make sure to give the channel some support and some love by giving it a sub and turning those notification bells on. Like I said, this has been your host, Gnome T, and I'll see you a lot on Friday's episode.